What is up, y'all? It is Brent with another episode of the Two Files. And today I got my man Donovan with me. What's it going on? And today we are going to be talking about the one, the only, Big Boldy. The Big Boldy, Boldy James. Um, so, first thing I want to talk about is how kind of like Boldy's career didn't, or I say that mainstream appeal and not mainstream appeal, but that, that, oh, I guess a, um, just much more praise coming about seven or eight years after his project, his first project with Alchemist, my first chemistry set, and then pandemic happened, well, this is before the pandemic, February, um, February 2020, he drops Price of Tea in China, and it's probably heralded as one of the one of the best out, if not the best rap album that came that year. And then the year after, he comes out with Bo Jackson. And then, of course, we have the project with Nicholas Craven, um, Bodhi and Future Wave, uh, Bodhi, um, dropping Indiana Jones, and all these other projects kind of showing that, hey, I'm not somebody that you can really put in a box. I'm not just good with one piece, I'm, I'm good with multiple. So, um, in your opinion, Donovan, what are we taking as, on the record, okay, let's say this. If the Boldy Dilla project matches up with how we think it's going to be or the expectation for it, what does Boldy's career look like after that moment? For one, I want to say, I think Baldy James is like the personification of do the things you love and like eventually people will find it when they're supposed to. Because for him to have an Alchemist tape in like, what, 2012, something like that, um, and then not really get that critical acclaim until Price of Tea in China, uh, which was at like more than... At, at least like over half a decade past that, like he he just was just stuck to his guns and did his thing and never really let any appeal or not appeal or any like any um, success or non-success, whatever you want to consider it, um, dissuade him from doing the thing that he wanted to do. Um, as far as his career was, I mean, if this Dilla album is as good as we think it's going to be, he's got to be like top five underground rappers ever um, on some like MF Doom type show. But just because of the uh, the amount he's done, the quality of it, like the fact that he puts out four or five projects a year and there none of them I could really say he could have kept this is very crazy. Like, when we talk about, like, I always say this, man, like, oversaturation is a fucking myth. Because if your shit good enough, it don't matter how many fucking projects you drop in a, in a fucking, like, of course, like, you don't want to be dropping them every fucking week. But, like, it don't matter if you drop three projects a year, five, two, if your shit good enough, niggas don't care. And I feel like Bodie's a prime example of that. Cause like the year he dropped the Price of Teen Channel, he had like two other projects that came out that year. Um, I think like Manger on Nichols and then, or I can't remember how, what the full title is or the red title is. And then Real Bad Bodie, I think. And then, and when Tobias, the Price of Tea in China dropped, um, not the Price of Tea in China, but when Bo Jackson dropped, he had Bo Jackson that year. I think he had Kill Everything or Kill Nothing with Future Wave. Um, and then he had Super Tamo Bowl 
with Optimus again, which was also great. Um, and in 2022, you got so many. Probably you got the you got the project with uh, Future Wave. You got the project with uh, Nicholas Craven and all this other shit. And then top of the year, you got Indiana Jones and Dilla probably supposed to be dropping this year. Like you can't really. Every Boldy James fan I know has said, "Hey." I like all these projects, even though they had a preference, but like everybody got a favorite different project from him outside of the Alchemist ones. It's something that I feel like is an underrated thing as an artist. Like if people, if everybody says, I got a favorite project, I got a different favorite project from you. I feel like that's a sign of greatness more than it is a sign of undecisiveness, I guess. Cause like, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like that's a good trait to have. Like, I want my fans to say, I want my fans to be debating which 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 of my shit is my best project. Like, I feel like that'd be, I feel like it's a, a something to be admired about more than to be discouraged about. I feel um, definitely feel the same way. I feel like it 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 makes it so more than likely if you do have that, it just shows that you really have done your thing over the course of your career and it's more than likely you didn't have like a particular prime um, or you were less likely to have a particular prime like just over your career more, most of your stuff was pretty damn good and it makes it it just makes it hard for people to choose like a Kanye or um, like Jay-Z or um uh, even people like uh, Tyler, like it's hard for people to have pick which one of these people that they, which one of these albums they feel like is their best, just because they've dropped so many good things and so many different things over the course of their career. Their career, and I think what sets Boldy apart or keeps him from being oversaturated is that, like realistically, I probably wouldn't want to hear like a thirty track. Boldy James project, but him splitting those 30 tracks into these different albums or different projects by different producers keeps things fresh and it keeps every project memorable. So, and then the production sets apart the the production the production does its job. And shout out to all the producers that have produced for Boldy James. Um, I feel like producers don't get enough credit, but that's enough another conversation. But those different producers able to put different sounds for him help set apart what he's going for. He's going, I feel like he's going for that undeniability. Like, no matter what the fuck I rap over, I'm going to kill this shit. Because, like, I feel like the Indiana Jones project was really, really, really good. And I really enjoyed it. Like, I feel like it was a, I feel like it's my favorite um it's getting up there as my favorite outside of the uh outside of the alchemist produced ones the nicholas Braves one and um yeah i feel like this is up there for me so when i feel when i think about Bodie james i feel like i feel like because a lot of times when when the, the price of tea in china first dropped there were a lot of people that were saying Man, I just can't get over how like monotone his voice is. But now it's like he uses it so well and messes it with his flow and his like delivery to make it such a like a unique, like it's to make it so unique. And I love it. Um he's really one of the only people that can make it that can make it work for himself. Whereas other rappers, it's like, damn, this shit boring. He kind of like, Bodie like used that to his advantage. And I kind of like, it's very rare to see that. But, um, but yeah, like, Bodie got a fucking, like, Bo, if this Dilla project ends up being great, or like, if it ends up being as hyped up as it is, like, Pretty much like Sir Michael Rocks was talking about like, on Twitter, talking about how fucking good this shit sound. And he had this shit in the stash since like 2018, I think. 
or he had it in the works since 2018. So I don't know, bro. I feel like I feel like a rap. I feel like his rap legacy has shot up so quick in such a short a span of time. It's kind of unreal. Like I don't want to bring him. I don't want to bring him up. But I feel like an example of this is like it's not nowhere. It's nowhere near it's like monumental. But like I feel like an example just like how fast somebody has built a legacy up. It's like kind of like you know how like with Kendrick, he had. Um, he dropped Section 80. He like he changed the rap world in like two years. Like 2011 to 20, 2013, that shit will never be replicated. I feel like Boldy is like making such a name for himself, like in terms of one producer projects and how how still how important they still are. Because you very rarely see that. Like, and Boldy has done them with multiple guys, and it's important. So, like, you get your own shine and the producer get their own shine and y'all get to make something special. Um, if we had I think, to... Wait, sorry. I was about to say, I like you were saying how he shot up. I think he's went from a Detroit legend to a rap legend. And uh, he went from a Detroit rap legend to, like, just a general rap legend, an underground rap legend in the span of about two years. Right, it's shit like that shit wild as fuck. Like, I don't know if it's lightning in the bottle, but like he he saw how well the price of Chia China did, and it was like, okay, this shit getting so much acclaim, I'm gonna put out another one. And I tell you this, I would not leave it if he ends up doing drug dealer and then another alchemist project this year. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Cause that shit gotta be nuts. Like that shit crazy. This but man if, has a project produced by someone who has been dead since like 04. That is insane. And like, yeah, that's just crazy. And speaking of that, Logic said he got one too, and I need him to keep it because I don't need him. Now that 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 be OD and it'd be oversaturated from the market. And I don't I don't I don't want him flexing that he got he don't deserve that. The only issue is like with Logic, the only thing I would say is that one of the prime reasons he probably got that shit is because he comes off as a very friendly dude. That's the only reason. I'm not saying I'm not approving of that shit and how much he has quoted like Dilla in his like influence as like a per- like as him producing. Um, even though I don't approve of that shit, but let's not get too hung up on the mix, man. Um what do we think is I think my top five Bodhi songs have to be Gray October at number one. Um Slow Roll Illegal Search and She uh, Illegal Search and Seizure. Um Flight Risk and and Flag on the Play. Off the future way take. What about you? My top five Boldy songs are Hot Water Tank, uh, 190 Bands, uh, uh, Thousand Pills, uh, I gotta, I gotta really go. It's just so many like really good ones um double hockey sticks and what's one more i probably have to say i'll probably say game time the beat the the beat switch on fucking double hockey stick i'm gonna say that's easily got to be one of the. I think like this got to be one of the best of Alchemist's career. I Actually, feel like I, I, don't, I don't think he got yeah, ten better than that. Uh, My fifth one is on the drugs. 
You said designer drugs? Yes. I can respect that one. Huh? I said I can respect that pick. Yeah. It is, but it's it's crazy because he because he has so much to go off of, and they're from so many different projects. Like I really, if you had to ask me my top five uh, super tech mobile, I'm sure we would be like talking about our different ones and just how like just how different those picks could have been. So the fact that he spread that type of stuff throughout ten, like eight to ten projects of pure quality is crazy. Yeah, man, like, with Boldy, like, when we talk about, in terms of, like, the best 20s rapper, like, he easily, I feel like he easily is in the lead so far. Like, it's the best rapper of the 20s. I don't think, well, I'm going to say easily. I feel like I have I say I feel like he is number one in the number one in the race for the best rapper of the 20 so far. Of uh, 2020s or the or the, like 20 the 2020s. Oh yeah, most certainly. Like is yeah. I mean, because Kendrick's only dropped like one thing, and you know. We're kind of in a we're kind of in a transitional era right now, um, with just like streaming is really like on its head right now with people dropping albums that have like twenty something songs for numbers, and you know I think we'll 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 be able to it'll be the quality of get there as the decade goes. I'll, but I'll, I'll say this too. I don't think, like, when you say transitional era, I feel like we're still in the streaming era, but, like, I feel like we are, like, on the, I was talking about this on my Twitter today, but the visibility for guys that we don't consider superstars is, like, skyrocketing now because the internet, TikTok, Reddit, all this other shit. So, like, I don't want to say we're in another blog era because I don't feel like like it's just no. But I feel like we're on the cusp of something that isn't the same, but, I mean, isn't, I, but isn't entirely different. Because you got guys like, dog, oh, if you told me Griselda would be people be known in real life in 2023, I would look at you fucking crazy as somebody that was like, who started hearing about them like in 2018. Or if you told me guys like V's or like just mission rap, everything like that would become much more of I don't want to say household, but much more like known, like almost like if I walk up to somebody on the street and they, and I ask them, like a young guy on the street, ask them who real the young OG is and they say yes. Like, I just feel like that visibility has kicked up. Like guys like Tony Snow and shit like that. I can't imagine them being like, it's so many guys are just so much more visible now than, I don't know if it's because of pandemic or streaming or pandemic and streaming combined or like those superstars not dropping that year. But I feel like I, I'm kind of going to say it was a blessing in disguise for everybody else. It's kind of like, okay, you can go search for your footing or your place in this era. Now, now that the superstars that the superstar ain't been dropping and shit, I feel like everybody, a lot of people got, I feel like a lot of people got footing over the past one or two years. And I found out like a lot of people did, like they take, they took the time out and it's like, you know what? I'm going to iron out my fan base, all that other shit. And I'll make sure like I'm known. Like, 
guys like, for instance, like guys like Mavi, like when Let the Sunflower dropped in 2019, I had just been, I just heard a dude, like people were talking about him on Twitter. I was like, I don't know who this guy is, but like, I finally listened to it during the pandemic. I was like, man, this shit good as fuck. Now, like, look at him now. Like, he's arguably, he he went on tour with Jack Harlow. Like, that shit wild. Like, it's, it's this, wild. It's yeah, the, it's, and it's crazy because, like, speaking of Mavi, I be seeing, like, Mavi is funny, and he'll have and I see that now just because, just the way the internet is, like, if you have, like, a subset of people who really like fuck with you heavy they'll really like boost you in a lot of different places and because the internet is so vast it has allowed people to be able to get to places they never would have been so you like you brought up bees like bees hasn't really dropped an album since 2019 um and then all he does now is well ever since now he's been dropping like snippets and uh, snippets of songs or like I mean he's dropped a couple songs since then but it's not anything it, it's not he, it was not enough songs to make like a, another album off of but his visibility has shot up so much because he's just in all of these different places and that's really it's just like Griselda got a Knicks commercial like this could have never happened in the 90s. Like, it's like a far side would have had a Knicks commercial. Or, like, that's like a far side would have did a video for the Lakers. Like, the far side was, is, uh, uh, rap, our rap legends, but they just weren't out there like that. Kind of the same way Gazelle is. So, yeah. And the, it feels like, the blog era feels like when the NBA started letting people shoot threes, and then now we got people shooting like 43s a game. A game. I get what it's you're saying. So, it's so it's just so much different now. Yeah, it's like it's the same concept, but it's just ta- it's been taken to a whole nother level. But in short, all I got to say is that Goldie James' rap, rap legacy has just torpedoed, like, has just skyrocketed in the past few years. Um, I don't think a favorite, I don't think somebody became my favorite rapper that quick. Real shit. Like, I don't think somebody has favorite, become my favorite, my favorite rapper as quick as he has. Um, or close to it. Um, Donald, do you have any final thoughts? Man, shout out to Baldy. Uh, immaculate rapper. Seemed like a really cool dude. Shout out to all the uh, underground rappers and, you know, people doing their thing despite what what acclaim or non-acclaim they are getting. Um, you know, let someone like Baldy be the reason that you keep going. Like, cause what's what's Bodhi like? Forty something? Like, it's really crazy to see him getting his this acclaim. Really, what most people would consider old for rapping. And Forty years old, yeah. Yeah, he shows no signs of slowing down. Like, if somebody told me, if, if you was talking to a random person and they told you they was a rapper and like they told you they was forty, you'd be like, eh, I don't really know, but. He's he's doing that job. He's he the age that we're considering a lot of rappers like fall off. Like Wayne is is in his forties now, and it's like, all right, okay, I don't really know if I want to hear much from him like I used to, or well, especially not like how I used to. You know, Drake is kind of getting a certain way. Um, you know, it's it's really hard to maintain a certain level of quality as you get older because you're just in a different mindset. Um, but Boldy has been able to keep that junk going, and you know, it's him. But other than that, you can cut it off right there. Um, new episodes on the way. Um, new writing on the way. Oh, didn't want to say 
March 3rd, whenever Dila Souls uh catalog comes out on streaming, I will be doing a listener's guide for that. So if you're looking to get into them, uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh check out Donovan Music, the artist, um, a great one. Uh Let's see what else. More interviews will be on the way in 2023 soon. Um, but other than that, y'all stay easy. Um, we out. <laughs>